This is what makes it fun. You know, Chris brings uh, brings his family here today, and it does it does make it enjoyable. I, obviously, I've gotten a chance to meet the family and the kids, but making them a part of this today is pretty special for him, and certainly pretty special for him uh, for us as we get to know him. But uh, welcome to the future of Louisville Cardinal basketball, right here. This is our family. <laughs> Today is, is certainly a, a new day for us and, and a brighter day, and we're excited to have Chris and his family uh, join us. I'm certainly excited to introduce him. Uh, I don't have to introduce Christy to the city, but certainly don't have, really feel I have to introduce Chris to our program. He certainly knows that, and uh, um, and I and I think that us having uh, the kids here, Haley, Laney, and wherever Braden is now, he's probably searching something out we welcome you it's, it's great to have you guys here and you're going to get a warm reception while you're here every day for the rest of your career and when you retire here um, you know i'm also equally uh excited about all that they bring that their family brings to our basketball program the athletic department and our community i mean i think about this the university and community this is this is what we want i explained to our uh, eula board and our board of trustees that this is a family that fits Chris is a coach that fits what we want, and there's a number of reasons why, and I'll get to those, but we're, we're terribly excited to have him here. Uh, Chris knows basketball and has excelled in his career both as a player and as a coach. He's worked his way through this, from coaching uh, high school women's basketball or girls basketball to where he is today as a, and being introduced to the head coach of an elite basketball program here at the University of Louisville. His nine years as head coach at Xavier produced terrific success. His 215 wins are the 11th most in the NCAA of any coach in their first nine seasons of coaching. He joins the ranks in the likes of Roy Williams, Jamie Dixon, Mark Few, Thad Mata, Sean Miller, and one of our own, Denny Crum. His most recent team achieved a record of 29-6, won the Big East Conference, and was awarded the number one seed in the NCAA tournament. We now have the number one seed in both women and men's basketball at the University of Louisville. <laughs> Chris has been honored uh, with the uh, 2018 Big East Coach of the Year, the NABC District 5 Coach of the Year, and became the all-time wins leader in Musketeer history. The team finished number three, ranked in the AP poll, so we got to see him quite a bit on ESPN and uh, other channels throughout the year. But also in 2016, Chris won the Henry Ive Award for the U.S. Bas Basketball Writers Association's National Coach of the Year, when his team received a number two seed for the NCAA tourney and was ranked number five in the AP final poll. Chris has guided uh, Xavier to the NCAA Sweet 16 or better in four of his nine years as head coach. And I think he fits a number of the things we looked at in terms of the criteria. So when we were in search of somebody that embodies the key, the key criteria that can not only honor our past but embrace our future, he hit on many of these points, if not all of these points. We had criteria to meet on and off the court. The person has to want to be here and here only. This person has to love everything that the City of Louisville and the University of Louisville represents and has to offer. This person has to become a key part of our community going forward. This person has to represent the highest in integrity in athletics and in life. This person has to be competitive and a proven winner. You get where I'm going with this. This person has to attract talent to not only fill the scholarships, scholarships but to fill the staff positions. This person has to respect our legacy of winning basketball and those that played a role in our success. And thank you, many of you are here today. I know Chris appreciates that. We have like feelings about the legacy of this program. This person has to be comfortable with high expectations to include replacing two lost banners with new ones. We're in agreement with that. This person went, uh, has to have all these qualities and that person is sitting on the stage today. I'm going to give him a treat that matches my history with his, which is what we do in this town. The Cards fans, please join me in welcoming our, ne our next men's head basketball coach, University of Louisville, Mr. Chris Mack. If anybody needs this for Braden, just let me know. <laughs> I want to thank Dr. Postal, 
Vince, for allowing me to uh, be your head coach. This is an awesome and exciting day for me and my family, and it's an opportunity of a lifetime. I'm not going to make a lot of promises today. The one thing I'll promise you is you're going to get my best, my very best. Standing here before you, representing a school that's had two permanent head basketball coaches since 1971. I don't take that lightly. You have two Hall of Fame coaches, multiple Final Fours, multiple national championships, multiple All-Americans. Some are here today, and I appreciate that. For Coach Crum to be here, I got I got to share a funny story with Coach Crum about Coach Crum. I don't know how funny you'll think this is after I tell the story. <laughs> My first year in college basketball as the director of basketball operations was at Xavier in my very first road going to the uh, post-game press conference and saying if that experimental rule ever comes into play <laughs> well you can probably guess the rest coach I, I apologize for us beating you that day <laughs> and obviously coach Patino Hall of Fame coach as well he's been awesome to me he certainly in, implemented a style all unique. He's one of the best to ever coach both the college and the pro game and I understand that I have big shoes to fill. And as I said before, I'm going to do my best. I want to thank the community of Xavier for believing in me in 2009. Specifically Father Graham, our president. Mike Babinski, who's now Purdue's athletic director who had the guts to hire me, and then Greg Christopher, the AD that I just left, who kept me around. I told, our, I told my players, it's not easy. 24 hours ago, I was in a locker room with a lot of tears, both from the players that I coached and from the guy standing before you. To leave a situation that I gave my heart Gave two ACLs, a tele a lot of memories. To come to Louisville, obviously this place has to be special to me, and it is. I would be remiss if I didn't recognize David Padgett. I talked to David earlier this morning, and I can't imagine the yeoman's task that he had to face just days before the season started. To keep that group, this group, together and maybe they didn't experience the results necessarily that they wanted to or they expected to at the beginning of the year, but he did it with class, he did it with integrity, and he did it with putting players first. To our current players, I told these guys about a half hour ago, and I think a couple of them will probably start shaking their heads. I recruited about half of them. <laughs> And if they wouldn't come to me and Xavier, and I told them you're stuck with me, I'm just going to come to you. <laughs> there will be no, well, those are Patino's guys versus Mac guys. I chose this group. You guys are my guys. I'm going to work hard every single day to make you better, to make us better, to make Louisville basketball better. Earlier on, I talked to him about meeting a high standard. And I see my job as the head coach of keeping that standard high and not lowering the standard when it's not met. It's not going to be easy. I want our team and our players to be tough, together, and unbreakable. To the former players here at Louisville, this is your program. You built it. I know what that's like. I did the same thing, although my, my brick would probably be a lot smaller. Up the road at Xavier. I want each of you to know there are no different eras. This is Louisville basketball, and you are a big part and are the part in making it what it is today. From afar, I admired so many of you over the years. 
I hate recognizing individuals because I'm going to leave some out. But I will recognize one guy who I know is not here because I'd probably see him above the crowd. Man, what really started to turn me on when I was a kid about Louisville basketball was never nervous purpose. <laughs> Dr. Duncan, stop. I, I better stop because there's a lot of guys in this room. I want you guys all to know that you're always welcome. You don't need an invitation because that's what this is. To stop in and practice, to come to a game. At some point, when my wife picks out our house, you'll all be welcome over there as well. To the Louisville fans, Card Nation, and all the people in this community that have supported this program for so many years, I know these past few months have been unbelievably difficult. They say the darkest clouds elicit the brightest lightning bolts. That lightning bolt is coming. It's not me. It's those guys. It's time to turn the page and start building something special once again. I urge you, fill the young. Give these guys a chance. Let's get this place rocking. I want you to take pride in your city and your team. And again, my promise won't, comes with, won't come in wins and it won't come in banners. It'll come in the sense that I will work my ass off every single day to make you proud of Louisville basketball. that I brought with me. You know, coaching at times can make you an absentee husband and an uh, absentee dad at times. You'll see me, I try to blend. I don't try to balance, I try to blend my family life with my professional life. First to Christy, did, did you guys know she's from Louisville? <laughs> my rock, my best friend. Oof. She, um, she bleeds cardinal red. I want you to know that's not the reason I took the job. <laughs> Thanks, babe. To my girls, Laney, my oldest. You want to stand up real quick, Bugs? I call her Laney Bug. You can sit down, Laney. <laughs> want you guys to know she's going to cry every game we lose. <laughs> and when you're getting into your teen years with your daughter, you don't want them crying. So trust me, let's not lose. She's invested. I mean, we walked off the floor at Xavier the other day against a, a very good Florida State team, maybe the toughest loss I've ever had with a team that I was so invested in. And um, she couldn't stop crying, you know, well after our guys quit crying in the locker room. And uh, that's how our family, that's how our family rolls. Haley, you want to stand up? This is my crazy, competitive, Heart of Gold, Middle Child. <laughs> Hale, you can see, okay. <laughs> She'll be the one that's dancing the games and um, loving Louisville basketball like we all would. Braden around. He's back there. <laughs> I told our guys, Braden, get ready. I don't think Louisville is ready for Braden Mack. <laughs> if the band director is here, Braden will be super excited because every game I watch on my computer when I'm watching film at night, he comes over, he starts staring at my computer screen, he said, Daddy, where are the instruments? <laughs> so, Braden, I think they have a band here at Louisville. My mom and dad, who are here as well, Tom and Bonnie, forever grateful for their love and support. Just like a lot of you that played youth sports, my dad was my coach, gave me a lot of life lessons. It had nothing to do with Texas and Owen. One of the lessons I'll never forget. And um, so I was a soccer player. It wasn't a very good one, but I was a soccer player. And we had played a particular team and tied. The other team was terrible. I apologize. You know, Grossbeck, they, they, were, they were terrible. We tied the game. And as the final seconds are being counted down in my head, because you had the guys decide, well, two minutes, one minute. 
I knew that the game was going to end in a tie. And just as it ended in a tie, I picked up the ball. Teams were going to shake hands, and I punted it as hard as I could up in the air. And before the ball landed, my dad had grabbed the back of my arm and very forcefully said, get in the car, bub. <laughs> he taught me a lot about sportsmanship, playing to win, shaking the other guy's hand after the game when you don't. Thank you. And then my wife's parents, Danny and Debbie, who have been uh, unbelievable supporters of mine, have done everything that they can uh, to be at every one of their games that made their commute a little bit easier rather than coming to the Cintas. And just for the record, they don't have season tickets to Louisville basketball. Yeah. I want you to know a little bit of who I am and why I'm here, but I want to also make it very clear, and I told our players, it's not about me. It won't be about me, it's about them. When I went with Skip Prosser to Wake Forest, we had Chris Paul, we were the number one team in the country. And after my third year as an assistant coach at Wake Forest, I left the ACC and I went back to Xavier and I took a pay cut. I went from Wake Forest as a third assistant to Xavier as an assistant and I took a pay cut. And there were a lot of people, a lot of colleagues of mine that said, man, he's crazy. Why would, why would you leave what was arguably the number one preseason team in the country to go back to Xavier. But I did it for different reasons, and I did it because I followed my heart. When I went back to Xavier five years later, I was named the head coach at my alma mater. It's been an awesome ride for nine years. Lots of head coaching jobs over those nine years have presented themselves. And if I listed those out, some were very, very public at times. There were a lot of people that said, why wouldn't he go there? He's crazy. So when people say, why Louisville? He's crazy. I'm never afraid of a challenge. I'm, I'm never afraid of a challenge. I faced so much adversity during my playing years, I shared a little bit with these guys. Started both years at the University of Evansville. I left, I transferred, I sat out that tough year that Stephen Enoch sat out this year where you practice with the team, you don't get to wear a uniform, you have to sit out. And then my first exhibition game, in the, in the first year I'm eligible at Xavier, I blow out my left knee, eight seconds into the first exhibition game. So I sat out the entire year, two years in a row. So I'm getting cited for my fifth and final year, rehabbing like a son of a gun, and in the summer league after I got released, I tore my other ACL. And that personal experience was maybe the toughest I ever had to go through, both as a player and as a person. And I didn't know it then, but I know it now. I'm not afraid of adversity. It's going to hit. It's how you handle it. I learned during that time, thankfully, because Coach Prosser gave me a book after my second ACL. The tough times don't last, tough people do. And I'm going to carry that with me for the rest of my life. I told these guys here, this is my final stop. You'll never see Coach Mack coach at another university or an NBA team, high school team. I mean, for a second there with the board not getting everything in check, I thought I was going to have to be Mike Sabo's assistant at Trinity. <laughs> As I stand before you as your head coach, I can't wait to get started with these guys. It's going to be a player's first program. And with that, I'll take any questions that you have for me. And if you'll let us get a microphone to you right up front, Joey. Chris, how difficult and when did you know this you were going to do this? I think anytime you make a life decision, it's difficult. I will tell you that my decision making is always always comes from my heart and everybody makes decisions in life be it small ones or big ones in different ways and what works for different people doesn't always work for others if I went out and shop for a car I'm going to one lot I'm looking at the car 
That's what I'm getting, and I don't care what, what the salesman has to say. I just know it's not worth my time to go to another lot, compare prices. And so with this, it was a very, very tough decision, but inside, I knew it was the right decision, and I made it. When you look at the program, just some general thoughts about what you see, some of the challenges short-term, medium-term, and have in terms of reversing some of the negative traction and some of the positive traction that's occurred as well. Yeah, it's not my job to be the guy that looks backward. I wasn't here when a lot of the things that transpired have been written about. And I wouldn't have come here if I didn't believe this place can shine once again. A lot of people have taken the time to to write all the different stories. And I'm not naive enough to think that won't continue. But my job isn't to look backward, it's to look forward. And I'm excited about that. If I felt it was too overwhelming to do so, then I wouldn't have, then I wouldn't have come. Chris, has, has Coach Patino reached out to you at all and did that alleviate any concerns? I reached out to Coach. You know, I've talked to him twice. Um, he's been awesome. He had nothing but great things to say about the city of Louisville, Louisville basketball, the players that he recruited here, and his support of me. Okay, tell me about this, this building. You've been in here before, maybe not for a game, but can you tell us about that experience? You, you can probably tell me a lot more about the building. You know, people around the country that follow college basketball, I would like to think they think teams are tough, both physically and mentally. And as I said before, I do want our team to be tough, together and unbreakable and over time they'll learn our system they'll learn learn our terminology they'll, they'll learn our personalities and by the way us coaches will do the exact same for our players but i think just to sort of put it in a nutshell i would say tough together and unbreakable is how i want our team to be viewed chris chris I can hear you. <laughs> Chris, it, during your time at Xavier, it seemed like you really reached out to the fan base and wanted to kind of be visible with you and your family. During the, the times that, that this fan base has faced in the last six months, last couple of years, how important is that for you guys to be able to do this moving forward? I'm just going to be me. I don't know any other way. I, I know that the spotlight is brighter. I know the... Um, the attention comes from more people. I want the attention to be on our players, but I'm not going to lose who I am because I have to be genuine, genuine in order to lead these guys. And so somebody said the other day to me, um, you're, you're going to a place with a lot of, lot, of, lot of negative connotation and, and you know, how are you going to... I just looked at him and said, hey, listen, I'm going to be me. I'm not going to post on Twitter any more than I did before. I'm not going to become more elusive. After games, I'm going to go out to eat. I know you think I'm crazy. I'm going to do it. And that's the only way I know how. I'm going to be me. Coach, uh, how much about the FBI situation were you told in the interview process? And did that deter you at all? I was told enough. But I'd also say, say that everybody in here, along with everybody in the entire country, doesn't have their hands around what is going to happen. You know, a lot of people, a lot of programs have been touched. And it'll be interesting to see how it plays out. But if it were a situation that would scare me off, uh, then I would have said something to Vince. He was very open and he was very forthright in his dealings with both the NCAA uh, and what happened with the FBI. And um, again, we'll deal with it, whatever comes our way, and we won't be afraid of that. Chris, obviously there hasn't been much time at this point yet, but how much do you know about the, the, the team that you're inheriting? Well, I know a lot. You know, I've tried to, uh, over the last three or four days, watch as much film as I can. Um, a company called Synergy, and you can watch anything you want. You know, I recruited a lot of these guys out of high school, certainly how you play in high school. Um, it's a tougher job and tougher responsibility at the college level, but um, I know a lot, and uh, I'm certainly going to
not claim to know everything or have all the answers, but that's what a working relationship's about. My job is to push these guys and find out what their dreams and goals are and try to get them to that. And I want them to know what my dreams and goals are, which is why I came to the University of Louisville. Coach Mack, um, I was actually on the court in 99, and I missed the deal when you, when you call that play. So I, I appreciate the coaching staff. How close are you to having a full staff right now? Um, I think there's a little bit of, of a little bit of things that have to be played out a little bit back at Xavier. You know, I brought with me today uh, Luke Murray and Mike Pegues, who I fully intend to bring on as full-time assistants here. Uh, they're in the back of the room. You know, those guys have been with me every step of the way. Travis Steele, who's been my associate head coach at Xavier for the last nine seasons, is a candidate to replace me at Xavier. And, uh, you know, I think he would do an incredible job at Xavier. So whether Trav ultimately ends up being the head coach at Xavier, then that would obviously have some you know, ramifications for my staff. You know, certain support staff, I'm going to talk to that have worked here and represented Louisville uh, the right way over the last couple of years or however long some of these guys have been here years and years. Uh, but I'm going to do them right as will Vince. But ultimately I have to be comfortable just like any CEO would. And that's what you are when you're head basketball coach in 2018. Be very comfortable with the people that, that represent me, that work with me, work with our players, and represent you all as the University of Louisville. Coach, what do you uh, hope to accomplish? What do you hope to accomplish your first few weeks on the job? Um, wow, that's, that's, that's a good question. A lot. Um, you know, the first thing that, that we're going to do is work to establish as good of a relationship with we can, as we can with our players. Um, you know, we're going to set up individual meetings starting next week. I'm going to be on the phone with, with a lot of those guys, as will my staff talk to their parents, make sure that the current roster feels good about our vision for the program. And it may not match up. I told those guys, I'm not going to lower our standard, but if they want to be a part of it, I certainly want them to be a part of it. Why they chose Louisville is probably the exact same reason I chose Louisville, outside of Coach Patino. Um, so along with that, obviously hiring a staff, a coaching staff, a support staff, those will be my two main focuses as we move not only over the next couple weeks, but over the next few months. If yeah. Coach, you seem to genuinely enjoy the rivalry process there in Cincinnati and Xavier, but what is it, what comes to mind when you think of stepping into that little Kentucky rivalry and also, of course, the rivalries with uh, other teams in the ACC? Yeah, I can't wait. Uh, you know, there's something about those type of games that get your juices flowing. And, you know, I know maybe people in this city uh, can't appreciate um, the Cincinnati Xavier rivalry. So I see some of my local media from Cincinnati. The schools are separated by two and a half, three miles, and have had a history of some incredible games and some incredible battles. And uh, I love being a part of that, both as a player and as a coach. And I'm not naive enough to think that the UK Louisville game isn't isn't one of the best in the entire country. All eyes usually right around Christmas time. I'm usually sitting in my in-laws house over in Shepherdsville watching the game um, because it's during our Christmas break. I'm excited about it. But uh, our season won't be one game, uh, but you can sure as bet we're going to be ready to go next year here at the Young. Coach, you were talking about your early weeks on the job. How does being here kind of change your recruiting approach in terms of the type of players that you go after and you know, just how much broader is it now? Well, we went after a lot of the guys that, that ended up here. So I don't know how much the profile will change in terms of, in terms of the type of player, the type, the type of student athlete that we want here at Louisville. Just think we'll be able to get a few more of them than maybe we have in past years. You know, I want guys that are very versatile. I want players that are competitive, tough, and embody some of the characteristics I talked about before that I want our team to resemble. But, uh, you know, I'm not naive. You know, it's going to take a special person, a special family to believe in this place just like I did. And I think there'll be a lot of families, student athletes, prospective student athletes out there. They will. Back over here. 
Hi, Coach. Uh, Jason Weyer, Vice President of the Bill and Student Section. Uh, Coach, what is your vision for our student section moving forward, and do you have any plans to work with students here to further build our culture? Absolutely. You know, I'd be foolish, Jason, to sort of give you a plan in my first hour on the job, but it's their team. They go to the University of Louisville. They're going to remember those four years, for some of them five, for a few of them six. <laughs> They're going to remember that. Their time, you know, coming over to the Yum, rooting for their Cardinals, and so I, I want it to be memorable. I want them to, you know, make that 10-minute journey. I want them to pack the Yum. I want them to to feel a special sense of pride about their university, and that's what we're going to work every single day to do. And whether I have to storm dorms or incite pep rallies, I'm not. I'm not scared to do that type of stuff. Yeah. How long have you thought about being the local basketball coach? And then in the past week, when did it kind of click for you to, to take this job? When I was asked. You know, I've always had a fondness for Louisville basketball. I don't think that's a secret. But at the same time, you know, my heart's been in Xavier ever since I was a player. And so, I wasn't auditioning or reaching out for other jobs. I never would do that, you know. But when the opportunity came, it was one I felt like I couldn't pass up. Yeah. Chris, in years past, have you ever been contacted about this job before? And then my my second question is, where did that fondness for this program come from? Well, no, because the job wasn't open. I didn't, you know. I think Coach Crum retired, you know right around the beginning of 2000s and wasn't even coaching then. So, um, I mean, I said it, you know, I mean, I'm watching, watching those teams. You know, I had uh, the opportunity as a senior uh, in college to lose a heartbreaker at Freedom Hall. Should have got you then too, coach. We had Brian Grant and Aaron Williams and uh, the support, the arena, which obviously is a different arena now. The names of the past, whether it's you know, Mill Wagner, Dewan Wee, uh, I can go on and on. Clifford Rozier, I mean, you know, it's it's one of the best. Charlie Tyra. <laughs> it's black and white TV at that time, man. <laughs> I just have always had a fondness for Louisville basketball. You know, I appreciate good basketball. It's not that I don't have a fondness for other programs. And then obviously when, when, when Christy and I got married and our, our wedding was here and our, um, our reception was over in New Albany, um, you know, I, I got to know the place even more. And so I've always felt really comfortable. And when I was asked to be the head coach at Louisville, it was an opportunity I couldn't turn down. Chris, you have recruited in the state of Kentucky, specifically this area, fairly well at Xavier. Talk about trying not to let kids get out of the state and how you will approach that. And then the second question, have you and the girls worked on any new rap moves? <laughs> yeah. Easy, Jody. Uh, 502 crew. You know, I, we always want to We always want to start you know, within our own city. You know, we always want to be able to, um, you know, recruit high school players in the area that, that believe Cardinal Red. You know, from that stand, from that from that point on, you know, we try to recruit in our breadbasket, you know, which is a five-hour drive. You know, the NCAA rules the way they are. Uh, when a high school prospect is a freshman or sophomore, you can't pay for his flight. You know, the the, the ability to get to California and see the kid and come back is, is there are a lot of schools between you know, California and here. So we want to be as good as we can in our breadbasket, establish relationships early with the student athlete and, their, and their, their folks and their support people, get them to a game at the young, and then as time goes on, be able to uh, reel them in and make them a part of this thing. But we're always going to start with our home base first. The city of Louisville, and you obviously have Indianapolis, Cincinnati, some major cities within an hour and a half, and then we'll just keep branching out. I, I recognize Louisville has an awesome national brand, and maybe it need, needs to be polished right about now, and we're not afraid to do that. But we're going to hit some areas that, that we've hit when I was the head coach at Xavier uh, with my staff who has their footprint in certain areas that they grew up in. 
Yeah. You made reference to dark clouds over here, Chris, uh, hovering over this program, but the same could probably be said of the sport itself, college basketball. What kind of reforms do you want to see come out of uh, Condoleezza Rice's commission, and what level of corruption do you see in the sport? Yeah, it's, um, well, it's, it's, a, it's a question I can answer for a long, long time. You know, I don't know, Tim, if I'm smart enough to articulate all the things that, and also have the ability to follow through with the things that, that maybe need to be changed. You know, I talked to my parents weeks ago about how Europe does it, club teams, and you don't really necessarily tie education uh, with athletics, but you know, we're way beyond that point. And so I don't have a great answer for you. I do think there has to be some type of representative uh, representation uh, for athletes earlier on. Uh, because sometimes as players get to our level, um, you know, they've been dealing with agents and talking to agents since they were 12 and 13 years old. And I don't pretend to have all the answers, but I think that would be a start. How, uh, Coach, how vital was it for you to have a full-time AD, whether it be Vince or somebody else, now it's Vince, a full-time AD, not an interim athletic director. How big of a deal was that for you? I mean, it's, it's huge. You know, nobody wants to go to a place that's on, um, you know, shaky, a shaky foundation. And, you know, spending the time that I did with Vince on Saturday, which, by the way, was a long time. He said three or four hours, and that turned into eight or nine. Yeah, it was worth it. You, you know, you promised that I'd make Haley's volleyball match, so I got to the last one. Uh, but, you know, I just, uh, I don't know, I feel like this place is special, and you, you, you need that stability, and I have it with Vince, and, and uh, you know, he's, he's awfully smart. He hasn't necessarily worked in athletics, but also I think you know, smart people understand maybe where they have to grow as well, and our vision was the same. He bleeds Cardinal Red, I know that. He has a love for this place, the community, and the university, and that's what you want. You know, you want synergy with the guy that you're going to be going to battle with every single day, and I have that with Vince. Uh, Chris, correct me if I'm wrong, you played for Jim Cruz, Pete Gillen, you coached with Skip Ross, or Sean Miller. Who, who's the guy, if you're making a decision, who's the guy you think, like, what, what would he do here? All of them? I mean, I... I think you, you're, you're the experiences of everybody that you played for, that you coached with. And I think, you know, a lot of times head coaches, they tend to talk to other head coaches around the country. Hey, what would you do in this situation? What would you do in this situation? I like to lean on my staff. Because nobody understands truly the dynamic of the team that you're dealing with more than the assistant coaches and the staff that you have in place than them. You know, I, I could ask him, I could ask a, a fellow head coach, um, hey, what, what would be best for Jordan Noir? How does he know? He's never coached him. You know, he's, he's never, um, he doesn't know what his deficiencies are, what his strengths are, what his personality are. So I want to make sure that the people that I lean on every single day are, are, are the people that I coach with. That doesn't mean I don't have influences, but when it comes to advice, talking things over. I try to lean on my own people. One more, anyone? Okay, that'll wrap it up. Thank you.